this is going to be cool. <laughs> the topics and opinions expressed on the Dudes and Beer podcast are intended for an audience of 18 and up and are solely those of the host and guest. They neither reflect the opinions or values of either the sponsors of Dudes and Beer or your mother. I mean, seriously. Have you ever heard these guys? They'll talk about anything. Whoa, whoa, hey, you think they're going to show it? <laughs> uh, they'll probably just blur it out. <laughs> whoa, check it out, Beavis. Grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. It's Dudes and Beer. Well, hello everybody, and welcome to episode 65 of the Dudes and Beer podcast. Yeah! I am Christopher Jordan, your host. With me, as always, Woo! is Stephen Bishop over here. I'm here! We also have special guests this evening, Confucius Jones yeah. of the Revolution Digital Group and the Woo. F... Fuck Your Opinion podcast, as well as those damn comic book guys. And we also have Lauren with us, yeah. with the mysterious No Less Name. Uh, <laughs> She's like Prince. And her own sound effects. I like that. Anybody that brings their own yeah. sound effects to the table, I am all about, Lauren. That is dope. Uh, might, so have, might have own theme music. This evening, this evening is going to be super fun. We're going to be talking about the use of pop culture to move the memes of society, uh, what it means to politics, what it means means to just society in general uh, whenever you have things like this racist show Luke Cage on <laughs> Netflix racist? we're going to talk about the we're going to talk about people accusing the show Luke Cage uh, being racist um, whenever we come back from this message from our sponsor guys Hey everybody, Chris Jordan, host of the Dudes and Beer podcast here. Has this ever happened to you? Tired of looking in your rearview mirror after a couple of drinks with friends or worrying about no refusal weekends and DUI stops? Are you planning a night on the town and want an easy, safe way to get around while still having fun? Well, Fair is the ride service for you. Simply download the easy-to-use and free Fair app from the Google Play Store or iTunes Marketplace and use promo code DUDES10 every time you ride with Fair to save 10% off your ride. Have a Fair driver you liked riding with? You can not only give them a review and tip, but you can add them to your preferred driver's list on your Fair app and request them every time you ride with Fair. You can schedule rides with Fair to pick you up immediately or as far as 30 minutes to 7 days in advance, eliminating the need for last-minute calls and allowing you to pre-schedule pickups in locations other than your home city. Perfect for those traveling for business or for fun. So don't forget to stop on by and download that free Fair app and use the coupon code DUDES10 every time you ride with Fair to get 10% off your ride. That's right, don't forget the coupon code is DUDES10. So be like dudes and beer, everybody. Party safe, use fair, and drink responsibly. And we are back, yes. Well, uh, as we said before we went off to that great commercial from fair, make sure to use them. ACL just finished. And, you know, it was amazing to me to hear stories of people. this weekend, too. I know. Yeah. I guess, yeah, it's still going on. So it's just funny to me how, like, Got people will literally weekend. drive their car and, like, go sleep on the street. You know, and Dude, stuff they, like that, because the street got shut down yeah. while they were partying in the Yeah, they'll, they'll sleep in the know? car, like, in the it's, lane, dude. Well, like, and I'm what, 35. Like, I remember a story from my childhood of my uncle, uh, who will remain unnamed in this story, but who literally, at the time, he had a little problem in life, and he'd go to the bar after work, and one night he like was there. That sounds like a he good was, time. He was there. Yeah. He was there frequently. Um, I'm <laughs> almost as much as he was at work. Um, yeah, <laughs> and That's a part. one night went out to his car, keys in his lap. You know, I think he may have fallen asleep with them in the ignition, but he fell asleep ooh, in his ooh. car. But literally got hauled off uh, for um, intent to drive intoxicated. Intent. Intent. Because um, wow. he was passed out in his car with the keys in the ignition. So you really got to watch what you're doing. Okay. That's why stuff like Fair is clutch, dude, because it's great. It's fantastic. You can actually use them to come pick you up, drop you off, all that kind of stuff. And hey, you yeah, can Yeah, because that DWI thing, man, want. can get you like 15000 no in debt or some oh, shit. Oh, smooth. You know? like, like, that's, was, that's a cheap DUI. I was in court one time for 
undisclosed reasons. And when I was in there waiting to get talk to the judge, a guy walked in there in his in the in the, in the jumpsuit. And he had <laughs> he had got thirty six months for a DUI. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And it was funny because the guy was sitting next to. He told me he was like, "Man, thirty six months ain't that ain't that bad." I'm like, "That's three years." Don't let the month <laughs> yeah, fool you. Yeah. That's three that's, years that's for three drinking. Years. Dude, that's three freaking years. Three years. It is never and granted, it was probably his multiple offense mm-hmm. or something like that. It wasn't his. He was already in, like so by him coming in there in the jumpsuit. He had already been in jail because they make your first offense on a DUI prohibitively expensive. Him. In order to make you never, ever want another DUI in your life. Yeah. Um, and depending on your blood alcohol, you know, you may have to have like... But see, the trick is, you don't... Car. Drinking and driving is bad. That's why you drink before you get in the car. So you're technically just driving. Yeah. But you're not really drinking and driving. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> then it's just driving. <laughs> the influence. Yes. Technically, <laughs> officer. And speaking of people that are wrongly accused, how about Luke Cage? <laughs> yeah, what's... What's this Let's story? move on into it. Well, no, um, I love yeah. the fact that this story has come to life on the screen. Um, it was one of my favorite stories. I think I posted right after I started watching it. Like, it was the beginning of my love of Dwayne Turner as a penciler um, was the rebirth of Luke Cage. And, uh, you know, he went on to do Wolverine, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, let's just let's even just check out the theme because the theme is just dope as shit. It's just awesome. You right, Lord? You okay? <laughs> but the theme is something that is like straight out of. Uh, it was interesting. I was listening to you the other day on the FYO podcast, uh, talking uh, talking about um, the the election and everything else. I think it was the episode that y'all. Had we done. always talk about the fucking yeah. election because that uh, goddamn uh, election yeah, just won't go away. It just will not <laughs> yeah. go away. It's nah. a gift that keeps on giving, really, as far as shows go. Um, but. It, it was interesting to hear you say that you're a fan of black exploitation films. Confucius Jones, that's where I got the name from. I'm a, <laughs> don't say nothing long. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan of many of those movies as well. And you know, movies Dolomite, like, that's the name uh, I was trying to Dolomite, think of. Dolomite, okay. Yeah, Dolomite. Dolomite's a great one. I was trying to think um, of that earlier. I'm a big fan of Shaft, as I was telling yeah. you. You know, you asked me to go on to Comixology and find some stuff, and I was like, oh my God, they converted my, Shaft um, into a comic. My book. favorite one. And is, it was so well done. Is Blackula. Yes. Yeah, God, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it. Yeah. I like yes. Foxy Brown. I like anything with Pam yes. Greer. Um, yeah, I remember seeing true. Dracula in the theater as a kid. Really? And, uh, that's, that's really dope. showing your age. <laughs> yeah. No, dude. I'm, I'm 41. I just turned 41. I'm not, ashamed, I'm not ashamed to say it. In the know? theater. That's dope. There was, it I just, just turned 20. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's... <laughs> That's a lie. But, you know, it's interesting to me, um, the people that have, of course, responded, I guess it was on Twitter, and were like, what's up with Luke Cage? Seems like it's really racist. Um, I think uh-huh. most of those were people that were jokingly responding because of the recent article that came out about uh, um, Tim Burton being accused of racism for not having any black characters in the recent Incarnation. Well, yeah, because Tim Burton came Wonderland. out and said that because when he's writing, he de- f- de- by default pictures white people because he's white. Hmm. Which, to be fair, I can't knock it because if I was writing, I would automatically think of black people as default. <laughs> right, say, right. You know Some or other. You True. know what I mean? Like, but then at the top of that, Tim Burton makes the weirdest fucking movies and uses the same five people. Well, so. not only yeah, that, yeah, the same also, five people. He's also translating like an 1800s British story, you know. So um, the likelihood of there being African Americans in the storyline is uh, not in the way we need to see them. But I yeah, mean, exactly. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, he had, he had, look, he had um, uh, God damn it, I forgot. He had Billy D. Williams yeah. as um, a Harvey Dent in the first Batman. So I have he no did. Qualms. That's he did. right. So, yeah, he did. I have no qualms. Yeah, he did a great job. He did that. until the second one. I mean, yeah. to Batman Forever, they just completely forgot. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah. The Billy D needed some money. <laughs> <laughs> Billy D always needs some money. Yeah. You gonna leave Lando out of this? That's yeah, what you're yeah, gonna yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but going I home mean, to Leia. It was just funny to me to see the article and actually read it and go, "Come on, people! Really? Have any of you ever picked up an issue of Luke Cage ever? I, I think like the sh- It takes place in the. It takes place in Harlem. Yeah, in Harlem. Like your. your I just imagine of that. the people who are complaining about Luke Cage being racist how yeah. their hairs are going to blow up when Black Panther comes out oh yeah like, <laughs> right like, exactly yeah, yeah. like Black Panther's in Africa so it's it's really like you can't even handle Luke Cage and now you know yeah. well and it was interesting because when those characters came out it was right in that era mm-hmm. you know it was right in that Black the Black Panther character era. is older than the Black Panther organization yes really so it 
Yeah, yeah. Hear, I've heard people say like the Black Panther comic book is based off the Black Panther. I'm like, nah, they can't. Black Panther mm-hmm. can't. Like, yeah, Stan Lee did that before. It's the other way yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's it's interesting to me how even it, it, whenever I was with you on Sunday and we were just sitting around chatting, and I was shooting talking, the shit. To, yeah, just shooting the <laughs> shit, and it was like you know, it, it's interesting to me the the flagrant use of the N word. But at the same time, Luke Cage turns it around, uh, I don't around like that the word. middle of it. I don't like that and word. And he's like, that's not what this that's is it, about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, and Even it's, uh, it's Alfred Woodard was saying yeah. that she didn't like that word. Yeah, it was, it was great. I you think, know, you know, the, the show. The real message behind all of it is really fantastic. And I'll say this because I have to save it for the comic book show, clearly. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want you to use all your gas here. <laughs> <laughs> My note that I never take. Right. Um, I like the show. I thought it was amazing. Um, I will say. Is it, that it was the weakest of the Marvel Netflix shows, um, because it we t- because y'all haven't, y'all haven't finished it, but towards the end it right, kind of right. falls victim to the usual Marvel cliche. Okay, uh, okay, um, okay. But yeah, and see, sa- I wasn't a time, big Jessica Jones fan. I love Jessica Jones. I I love went, Jessica it just Jones. didn't it just didn't grab me. It didn't grab me. I just like the psychological really aspect didn't. of it because she was fighting against a villain that wasn't equally as powerful as her. Yeah. You notice a lot of superhero movies. Mm, the, yeah. the villains always have the same yeah, powers. The same like time, if you have yeah. Hulk, it's Abomination. Uh, Clark Kent fought Doctor. Z- I mean General Zod. Yeah. Batman fights Joker with well, no powers and just crazy. Right. So you got somebody these, to match. Him. Yeah. Exactly. But with well, Jessica and, Jones, and my wife and I were talking about that. You know. Uh, uh, what just the whole dynamic of good versus evil and the fact that Luke Cage has to restrain himself all the time you know and, and yeah, the, yeah. you know his, I like that aspect he's of he's kind of in the batman aspect because he doesn't have uh, uh, his opponents don't have superpowers necessarily. Yeah, yeah right? and, and, you know, and they're that, street criminals. So he restrains that power. Well, you know, the thing for me is it kind of it, the, the show kind of ran into. Oh, fuck it, I'm gonna do the comic book show anyway. It ran into the um, <laughs> Superman problem where you have a guy who's so powerful yeah. that it's kind of hard to write a good story around that because you can't you can't shoot him. Right, and, every, yeah. and like you said, none of his villains are the bad well, guys he's fighting have power. So one of the one of the things that her friends brought up, and I'd like you to I'd like you to think about this for a moment, is that it, he he was like, I have a problem with the show because the bad guys are too damn likable. The bad guys are are too just like common guy yeah. and like ever like you know. Cottonmouth has an image of friggin' Biggie Smalls with yeah, the crown yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Up, up up behind him all the time, yeah. and it's one of those like. <clears throat> what I meant by the whole theme of the episode, and um, plenty of movies culture, where there's people that root for the underdog. Exactly, I mean, there's plenty of movies out. Well, there. and how does pop culture move society? How does it? How does it actually move? what we think and how we think because for the last 20 years we've had movies like there's some of my favorites you've said it too godfather you know um scarface i hate you know. scarface oh really <laughs> Come you on. hate scarface cuz i feel like it, it was it's one of those movies where people say you know this is motivates me to get up and come from nothing i'm like exactly. he dies at the end right, but right. he dies at the end he dies right. at the he end. gets shot the fuck up at the yeah, end yeah yeah he does like, and the message in that in that horribly redeemed. but i like the godfather it's because it's a good movie the, i mean even though michael but, corleone was evil he died at, of at least old age. And I, re- I remember Cottonmouth saying a couple things like that, kind of similar in, like, you know, the second episode and stuff like yeah. that about... But it's it's just interesting to me you know, how we have gotten to the point of, uh, and, and uh, you know, to talk about... <laughs> there was a noise. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the world, Chico, and everything in it. You know, we have gotten to that mentality, even the 50 Cent mentality of where 50 Cent became a driving force in people's lives. And it's like, is that necessarily the storyline that you want to follow? So, um, okay, so the narrative we're going with is like, you know, how does like, say pop culture influence regular people? Well, how does, right it, how does it not only influence regular people, but the narratives of society? Well, like like we were saying, you know, people looked at Luke Cage and were like, oh, where are the white actors? It's like, dude, it's a show based in Harlem. It's a comic book based in Harlem. I mean, uh, I would say to any white person who has an issue with that, like, you yeah. have way more shows for you guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So. Well, not only that, but it, it, go read a comic book. Exactly. Like, yeah. it, it, there is not... You're, you're trying to go by the comic if book If you here, do so, see I mean, white characters there, it's the cops or something like that, right? you know, um, because that's the case on the streets there. Well, Luke Cage, It was I very mean, true to what was happening. Luke Cage, they, um, I understand the symbolism of it. Uh, you know, like I said, he, if you notice, a lot of times he's wearing a hoodie. And he yeah, yeah. That, so that the symbolism for that, the Trayvon yeah. Martin thing. Yeah. Um, 
But for the show, even though I think the show was the weakest of the Marvel shows, I still think it's light years ahead of everything else on TV. Oh yeah, that's not right. That's not Marvel Netflix. Um, yeah, but I like I, I loved it because you know. It, like I said, it was just it was fucking amazing. I yeah, mean, just just to see, like you said, he, he doesn't. He, this is a superhero. He's a black superhero that has nothing. He doesn't really want to be bothered. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, want to be. When bothered. the show starts off, he's sweeping yeah. hair off the barbershop. Right. He can't cut yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it's not like you know you have some, yeah. a lot of superheroes. You see, they start off with something yeah. at least. He wants to stay low key. You know, exactly. Not in the light. Like Captain America, you know, ran into being Captain America. Tony Stark was a billionaire. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, who else? Yeah, Superman's a pretty big time reporter. Exactly. So. <laughs> 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 with no kind of college degree or anything. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. With Luke Cage, I mean, I just, you know, I understand the symbolism of it. Also, the guy who wrote, the executive producer, showrunner, and writer of the show, I forgot his name, it's like Chow something. He yeah. was the last person to interview Biggie Smalls before he died. Nice. Really? That's why that picture that, is That's why yeah. that picture is yeah. huh? So he was oh, like paying, paying man, homage. that makes yeah. sense. That's why you have the hip-hop influence. Yeah. He used to work, he used to write for Vibe and yeah. all these oh, other different shows. And then he started dope. writing for Ray Donovan. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good show. Um, like I said, I'm gonna save it for the comic book show. Yeah, but uh, it was. A, I've seen people complain about it. Well, I just want to use it as a springboard. It is. It is something that's happening out there right now, and something that uh, I think is a fantastic show. It's done a great job of actually covering the storyline of the character, and especially like I've Not been, Quentin Tarantino said. Uh, it, well, <laughs> it, it depends on if you're reading the the old classic stuff, or if, or if you're and that reading was, the I, '90s. I, I, like I, I started going through on Comicsology actually. And rereading the '90s version. Bastards! They want to answer my emails. But um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Comic Blitz. But um, they um, Quentin Tarantino had the issue because he, you know, he was supposed to make a uh, Luke Cage movie in the '90s. Yeah. Oh, okay. But um, he he said he didn't he said he didn't agree with the show because he thought what? it should be set in the '70s when it when it first came out. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he also admitted he'd never seen the show. Yeah. So I'm kind of like. You do understand that they're not going to make everything yeah, in the right? time period at which you were reading it. Yeah. And, you, and he said he had an opportunity to make Luke Cage, but he decided to make Pulp Fiction. So you yeah. had your chance, and you didn't. So, of course, yeah. as you know, movies go. Well, well and granted, through. in the 90s, things were rough. Like, Batman, it was odd because DC really ruled the 90s as far as that they went. They had the 90s friggin' Batman stuff, and it was Matter amazing. Matter fact, Marvel put out, and what they put out, like those, they put out that bullshit Roger Corman Fantastic Four. They did put that out. Yeah. Now, granted, yeah. they put out Blade. They put out Blood A. Right. Yeah. And that was, that was some baller stuff. That was some, but, but see, uh, that but, was some you know, even though, yes, yeah, I was a that big fan of Blade. That was a Marvel film. It was like Marvel was, nobody knew it was Marvel because it was, right. yeah. you had to really like look at, squint right. your eyes. Yeah. Shit, Marvel. It was Marvel yeah. meets New Line Cinema. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it, even then, that movie was made not so much with Marvel's participation. It was just more, one of, it was the first movie that Marvel said, holy shit, we can make, mo- we can make money yeah. off anything? We can make money yeah, off yeah. this. Yeah. Let's, let's try to sit back and let's see how this plays out. And then they started making more money. Okay, you know, it's time for us to start really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Shout out to Blade. Yeah, Wesley Snipes is never coming back. But shout out to Blade. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> he let that dream go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wish he would come back and do some Blade. They do. Well, I wish they'd bring the character back somewhere in the timeline. I, I think, think he could great, do it. I think he could do. I'm, it. I'm kind of excited about the upcoming stuff with uh, you know the Sorcerer Supreme. It's going to be great. I, I, you need Fresh here because I don't read yeah. Doctor Strange. Fresh yeah. is a huge Doctor Strange fan. Yeah, I, I, I like the storyline of Doctor Strange. It's super fun. It was. Um, I, I will say this, and you know, I'll, I'll let it go. Um, me and Fresh were talking about like superheroes with good villains. And we were saying that Batman's villains are so damn good because of the fact that he has two shows with his villains, and he's not on either one of them, Arrow and Gotham. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's not active Batman in either one of those shows, but they use his villains to push the show along. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? Like, Superman can't do that. Superman no. can't, you know. It was Spider Man, yeah. maybe can, but nobody wants to see a show about Aunt, Aunt May going to the grocery store and walking past no. Norman Osborn. And, <laughs> and yeah, getting, getting snatched up. Yeah. So, but yeah. 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 Luke Cage was good. Well, it, Luke Cage. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was good stuff. And, you know, I guess to me, I. I look at a lot of what's going on in society, and it, uh, it's like I'm using the bathroom. It's, yeah. <laughs> Lauren, you want some more? Then? I thought I thought Luke Cage was uh, really good. That like it was uh, like a storyline and plot that was down on a level that a lot of people could relate to. I thought. Like it was, it wasn't like a, a Marvel movie to me that was like so fantasy, you know, that like, okay, he's wearing a costume, you know, or a suit or yeah. a, a cape or a tricked out suit and Thor with his hammer or something like that. And, but, there was real issues that pertain to real life that people 
can relate to that everyday people go through every day. And with the the morality thing, you know, was well, awesome. I thought that that uh, was implemented. I, and it's interesting that you say that because I, I thought that amongst all of them, it was probably the most relatable to people who don't read comic books. Right. True. Um, because of the yeah. fact that it kind of breaks some right. of that genre. Yeah. Um, like you don't even have to like comic books and you can watch a show and, and get yeah. caught up in it. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's I, it's it's really good. It's well done, and uh, you know I like the way that it actually uh, brings about a lot of the the issues, like what you were saying with the with the hoodie and everything that mm-hmm. are going on in society. Yeah, he's problem. not running around with no <laughs> important. Look important. Uh oh, important. But uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. It now, uh, the Fuck Your Opinion podcast. I have oh, been shit. I have been thoroughly enjoying <laughs> some of the stuff on there lately. Uh, you know, I love the concept that y'all are actually bringing about a different concept of what's going on in politics. Explain that a little bit to us. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first of all, let me give a shout out to Tia. She says she's listening yeah. right now. Woo! Yeah. Um, Tia! I will say Tia is my better podcast half. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, list, I, list, I was telling um, Stephen before, nice. uh, before when you were out, yeah, um, taking that long piss, <laughs> that, <laughs> right? Uh, that um, you know, f- listening to her last week really made me proud because it really kind of shows I know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, when, when it comes to finding people, but um, the, the podcast basically what it was was that you know I'm a news junkie. Yeah. And ironically, yeah. even though the guy's an asshole, I'm a huge fan of Sean Hannity. Not because I yeah. agree with what he's saying; it's just because he's funny how he says it. Right, but um. I list, you know, I, I wanted to start a podcast that appealed to people that were like in the millennial age group that understood that didn't understand the news. Like a lot of people, honestly, not even millennials don't understand just politics in general. Right? They don't watch the news. I agree on that. Yeah. You know, they could something come up on TV about like, um, you know, like the hurricane is going on. They're like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what that is. So yeah. I wanted to create a show that spoke to those type of people. So you know, I went in. Tia ended up. Um, let me say the story right because she's listening. She don't talk shit and text me. Um, she ended up like she heard me. She heard me on, on another show, and she ended up following me. And then I ended up looking up her information and talking to her. And she was trying to go to school for journalism, so yeah. I brought her on the oh, show. Okay. Ended up working out, and you know, I, one thing I can say about her, which is cool, is that you'll never, as me as a person, you'll never see me stand next to somebody who I think doesn't have potential. That's why Lauren is here because I yeah. feel like Lauren has potential. You know, so with Tia, the same thing. I thought she had great potential. I brought her on the show, and I ended up working out and. You know, it's funny because me and her fight like cats and dogs before the show, and then no the show way. goes on, and it's like, oh, it's, it's peaches and cream. So, <laughs> sounds like a bad relationship. The fights are good know? stuff. Yeah, though. yeah. There's been times before me and T were fighting. You, if, if you saw the conversation, you would think that me and her didn't want anything to do with each other. Right, and right. The right. next, the next sentence would be, "Well, what we talking about on the show on Sunday?" Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you know, then you I, click. Yeah, you're like, like, I've considered doing a pre-roll on this show because it's sometimes what we're talking about is what is like totally different than the freaking episode. Yeah, you know, and we get into some of the strangest conversations and just wild. It's, it's, right, it's right, like right. like Bill Maher. Like I like right. listening to Bill Maher. Bill Maher does like it's, he calls it overtime. We does like a fifteen minute, right, like, right, just, yeah, just ranting and raving yeah. with the guest and all that. So yeah, well, I mean, what's some of the stuff that's on your mind, man? <laughs> Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Throw it out there. Throw it out there, man. The election, man. Yeah. It's it's. It's, the election is is funny, not because of the issues, but because of, it, like I said on on Facebook, it's literally like a SNL sketch. It is. It's just like Trump. <laughs> Trump. I've always said Hillary is very lucky that she's running against Trump because Trump has the filter of a two year old. Yeah. Right. Right. And Hillary has the personality of a of a man in a coma. Yeah. So just to see the dynamic, because yeah. like even when they debate, it's. It's almost like a rap battle. It's like, you know, I don't yeah. expect to see any professionalism or politics as usual. It's just two people trying to go to the lowest common denominator. Like, for instance, I feel like the Clinton campaign is trying to bait uh, Donald Trump into talking about Bill cheating on Hillary. But yeah, yeah. the reason they're baiting him <laughs> is because they know that Donald Trump is cheating on all his wives, so they're trying to drag him yeah. into that battle. They, they got to throw it back. I'm like, this is this has nothing to do with policy. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is like a reality yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, they're not even talking about policy anymore. Almost, it's more like just dig up on dirt. Dig on up on dirt. dirt. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know? what the hell? Like it, it's just insane. I think Chris mentioned this. Keeps on the getting last, deeper too. Yeah, Chris mentioned on the last episode how um, we live in a society where you know people, somebody like a Kim Kardashian who got robbed, God bless her, right, um, right, right. can raise to celebrity status off having no talent. Which yeah. is the same culture that allows somebody like Donald Trump to rise up well, in the political scene with no actual political experience. Well, no and that's just it. Acumen. No, it's he has risen to his position of pure celebrity status. Of celebrity. 
of absolute Trump, celebrity Trump, status. Right? The only thing he has done in the last decade, other, other than his brilliant chess moves with tax, I'm not going to lie. Like, as a businessman, hey. I said that. I said that last year. If I had the fucking money to pay a lawyer to be able to do that shit with the tax system, believe me, as a businessman, I, I know, take losses. You can't, you I can't, report losses. Because what he's doing is not illegal. It's no. Just, no. Like I told me and Chris you know, talked about it on Sunday. Exactly. Like me and Chris said on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. It's just don't expect him to go on and become president and change that because at some point in time he's not going to be president and he's going to go back to business. Right. And he's That's not going to change the code to go back into business and say, well, I got to stop right. paying taxes now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And those same people that are against him uh, after those little stipulations or whatnot, they're using the same thing too for yeah. their benefit. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, who in this room would not want to pay taxes if they could? Yeah. Well, but, uh, and I mean, let's but, not get into the whole, I posted a whole video from Ron Paul, as crazy as people say he is. Wait, Ron or know, Ran? Ron. Okay, Ron. 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 Yeah, yeah. Ran is cool, but Ran kind of yeah. comes back in and out like, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does, some, he does some spin moves here. Hey, wasn't there. it Trump that said Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage or something like that? He said something. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. Yeah. Donald Trump <laughs> has the best sound bites. And when he's not oh, yeah. being disrespectful, yeah. like some of the shit he says, it, it, oh, yeah. it's funny, but it's like, it's bro, gold. you're not supposed to run for president saying that. Like, you can do it for Saturday Night Live, but it's not gold. I know, right? It's not. It's not what it is, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because me and Tia were like watching that SNL skit where did did the debate. Like yeah, when uh, yeah. Ali Ball was playing him, and he said, you know, um, "All the blacks live on one street in Chicago." And I heard it's called Hell Street, and they're trying to shoot and kill each other. I'm like, "Yo, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how it sounds." Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, precisely. And and that's just it, you know. It, um, it, it is a, per, a perception. There is something that goes on there. And for some reason, that filter inside of him is just absolutely clogged as to when to stop, when to not say something. Well, like what Confucius um, said earlier about Hillary and Trump, they're perfect for each other. Like any oh, other... No. Presidential Absolutely. debate or whatnot, one or the other without the other would definitely probably lose to whoever yeah. their opponent is. But they're yeah. together now, together in the same that's debate. Why, and that's why, like, that's why I didn't care so much about the vice presidential debate because yeah. both of the, Mike Pence and Tim Kaine are governors. So they already know politics. The debate is going to be a typical politician debate. It's right. not going to be any fireworks. Yeah. It's going to be one side defending the other. Yep. Yeah. But with Trump and Hillary, it's right. like, you know, it's going to be like, like I said, a rap battle. Yeah. The, next, yeah. the next debate is going to be a town. Hall. So I would really love to see, and I said this on the FYO podcast, like for a heavyweight woman to get up and say, Trump, you know, I just want to know, why do you like to disparaging fat women? Yeah. My daughters are fat. I'm fat. Right. Like, how do you make yeah. you feel? Oh, man. But you know what Trump would probably say? You know oh, what? Man. I didn't, I don't feel that way. Hillary Clinton hates all women and thinks all fat yeah. women ain't shit. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. And also, with a town hall debate, you get to kind of walk around and get, invade each other's space. I don't know if you yeah. remember that year, that 2008, when, uh, President Obama and John McCain were running. John McCain kept walking in front of the camera like he was lost. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, he was lost. yeah. I remember that. So I mean, I, I, this, this election is probably the most interesting. Um, sure is, I think, because like you said, you have a guy who, like you said, is literally riding off his celebrity. Yeah. Like at mm-hmm. one point, it's funny. My mom hates Donald Trump, but she would used to watch the shit out of Celebrity Apprentice. I used to tell Absolutely. her like, "Why do you watch this? Yeah. It's funny. I like it. I like Donald Trump. I like you know he's <laughs> half shit crazy. I don't think yeah. that. I, I like don't the think... Viper. <laughs> exactly. But as soon as I run for president, oh, I, I can't support that. I can't support that. I said, yeah, but you watch Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> you, fed, you fed into his celebrity. Yeah. You fed so, into like the man is clearly trying to has been playing as well, a celebrity for and, years. And that's the thing is that now he has ridden it to the point where it's it's viable. Um, it's it's pretty scary, but it's viable. Yeah, you know, it's it's there and it's an option. And I mean, me and you talked about this about the electoral college yeah. on Sunday. You know, the electoral college was put in place because the founding fathers didn't believe that the American people would always make the best judgment in terms of president. Whew. I hate to say this, Chris, yeah, that's you know, I, messed Chris up right I love it. I agree with you, but I think this is the perfect time for electoral college to kick in. Like, ah, yeah, man, yeah. look at this guy over here. Oh, Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Be yeah. careful over here. But yeah. it, you know, it. It, it's just th- Donald Trump also is an example of the partisanship in politics because you see so many Republicans um, going behind I mean like siding with him but don't agree right. with him. they'll say yeah. I don't believe yeah. like Ted Cruz said I don't believe yeah. that Donald Trump should have access to nuclear codes and I think he's unstable right. but I endorse him Right. So that shows right there that you're so loyal to your party and not for the betterment of the country. Yeah. Even if you believe or whatever, right? Yeah, that right. you just want to get behind somebody because they're because part of your party. especially uh, Ted Cruz and Trump, they've had so many words back and forth yeah. with each other. It's like and now you know there was even a point where uh, Ted was like, I, I, you know, I'm never back him up, and then Trump's over here saying like, even if he was endorsed me, I wouldn't even accept it. And now he's you know, yeah, right. because Donald Trump talked about Ted Cruz's wife and father, and like, yeah. like, he said that, but I still endorse like, oh yeah, like loyalty to your party. I mean, it got nasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was nasty. Well, well, and that's 
that's just it. I've said since the beginning of this whole thing, this is probably the biggest rigged election that we've ever seen. Uh, they said it was rigged, and it ended up being rigged. And <laughs> like yeah, a dude certain. that's always been an independent suddenly ran as a Democrat, and all the people from him went over to Hillary. And you know, a dude that's never ever voted Republican or given money to Republicans is suddenly running as a Republican yeah. off pure friggin' celebrity speeches that are word um, for word repeated four yeah, years later. Eight, you know, <laughs> like it's just it's ridiculous. I, it's, I think a part of me wants to think that Donald Trump was looking at it from the perspective of holy shit, I'm still here. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. when he started running, he said, yeah, you know yeah, what? exactly. Because Michael Moore made this prediction, and I kind of agree with it that Trump started running at the last. The final year of his contract with NBC for Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah, I figured I would run. I could start negotiating more money because I get all the celebrity. Yeah. Then for some mysterious reason, he started fucking winning. He's like, "Shit, I'm still here. Yeah. Holy so crap! Let me start trying yeah. to like. I, I, I might I, actually have a chance. I, I, I gotta keep going. Like, holy <laughs> shit! Like, yeah. I was compared to. Yeah. Like, if I'm not gonna let it go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like if you're if you if you meet a chick that is above, you know, you're like, damn, she's way too fine for me. Right. And you you take her on a date and you're thinking, okay, this date's gonna go bad. I'm right, nervous, yeah. but it starts going really well. She's like, hey, yeah, I wanna go back to her. She's like, holy shit she wants to have sex with me right. now what what do I do now it ain't yeah. just coffee either <laughs> oh, yeah. exactly and so yeah. you, get, you know you need to get back to the house and she actually gets naked and you're like oh my god this is really happening I actually have a chance of having sex with her that's Donald Trump being the president he's like holy shit I made it this far I literally came out and said that every all the Mexicans that come across the border are rapists and murderers and I'm still here yeah, no, y'all right. still like me like yeah. holy shit yeah. holy shit like this is, this is insane <laughs> to me but and Hillary, yeah. I, Hillary almost, she got beat by a black man named Barack Hussein Obama. She almost yep, got beat yep. by a Jewish man named Bernie Sanders. And she about right. to get beat by an orange orangutan named yeah. Donald Trump. She'll get her shit together. Yeah. I mean, Hillary's like, Hillary has to be the most bitter woman in America. Like, holy shit, what the fuck do I have to do to yeah. make you like me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do, yeah. I, do I have to really get in here well, like, and like cuss him out? that's just it. And that's, <laughs> that's what I was telling you the yep. other day was I heard a local radio host talking about how it's literally become a popularity contest. And the, the fact that people don't see a viability of a third party, the fact that, you know, people aren't even willing to listen or court a third party, it's like, good God. You know, right now we have nothing yeah. but a left or right pendulum. Yeah, because right now they're not even talking about a, real issues. They're yeah, you know, digging up dirt on each other. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah, like not. well, it's like he said. You know, it, 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 yeah, it's like you're voting for you know Who you feel? prom queen. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it's like it's one of those things you know. where you know to give to Trump side credit. Unfortunately, his base seems to be more energized. Um, but the Hillary yeah. side is more like you know if somebody if you ask somebody you're from here like yeah I guess I am. Well, Trump's like, hell yeah, vote for Trump. Yeah, Trump, 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 Trump. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, what to me, and I said this on FYO podcast a few episodes ago, what's more worrisome for me, not worrisome, but interesting, is that if Trump loses, which I think he will, right? Um, that the Republican Party is finally going to sit back and say, you know what, we need to regroup. And that is the same mentality that made Richard Nixon become president because they said, you know what, we got our asses beat by JFK and Goldwater. I mean, yep. by LBJ, we need to find a way to regroup. And you come back and regroup, and you start to appeal to those people, and you get your votes back up. Because I think the what's, what's the last time that a uh, one of the two dominant parties was president three terms in a row? Was it? Oh, the, the I, remember. I remember. Yep, because Reagan, Reagan, then Bush. Reagan, Reagan, Bush. And the, but and after that it was Clinton, Clinton, then Bush. Yeah, Bush, Bush, Obama, Obama. But if Hillary wins, it'll be three. Yeah. But see, but see, uh, throughout history, uh, it's always uh, yeah, that, that's absolutely true. But every time there's been like a, a Republican president, there's a Democratic Congress or Democratic president, Republican Congress. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always been like a. That's gridlock. how New Gingrich got famous yeah. with his it's jackass. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? New right? Is jackass. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, oh, well, and I was telling you the other day, you know, really, really, the, when it comes down to it, the president. President really only has like ten jobs. Yeah, you remember telling like me. like his job description is really much more clear than most any of ours. Right, right. right. Like, it, and I'm self employed, but the things that I do like run the gamut. So you know, my job description is all over the place, um, depending on what gig I'm on. Um, it, it, with the um, with this one, you know, <laughs> Saturday Night Live made the joke where uh, Hillary told the camera, said, you know, if you want, if you guys. Don't ever want to see my face again. I promise if you elect me, I'll stay in the Oval Office four years and I'll never come out. But if you don't, I will literally run for president every, every time until I'm until until I win. Until and I, I never win. and I never die. And <laughs> I will yeah. never die. So yeah. <laughs> it's kinda like, you know, <laughs> Let's yeah. elect you once, just to get you out of here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just, just it, yeah, the whole, over and done. It's just, it's really. I will, like I told um, Chris at the house on Sunday when we had the interview with Chris Claremont. He uh-huh. said that 
the ascension of Donald Trump is almost like a comic book. Yeah, okay, he's yeah. literally the small villain that you would pay attention to that rose up through the ranks, rose up, and ended right. up being you know successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> exactly, Lauren, funny. do you have something to add to this? Yeah. As far as Donald Trump, yeah. So are y'all for him or? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not, not for. I'm not I'm for not. anybody that's yeah. in the going race right. <laughs> yeah, now. yeah. Right now it's a joke. Are y'all gonna I, move I've out honestly of never voted red or blue my entire voting. Are y'all life. gonna move out of the country? No, I I'm not moving out of, out of my country. <laughs> I, I refuse to do that. I have friends in Canada, though. I don't. Th- I don't think it'll be Somebody. that horrible. <laughs> Do you think it'll be that horrible? I hope not. But uh, yeah. if I get the intuition to go, I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're out, huh? I'm get the fuck I out. mean, <laughs> right? I mean, well, and I can, feel that way, you know. I can appreciate that. I know yep. people that feel yep. that way as well, and you know, th- there's always people that feel that passionately. The the question is. Do do the presidents really have those powers? Do the presidents really do three quarters of the shit that they say in any? Uh, so who do you believe might win? I, you know, I think the odds on favorite is Hillary. Quite oh, honestly, Lord. Um, she she said, "Oh Lord, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah." Don't let her win. Don't let her win. Oh, no. Who do you want for this? That bitch is evil. I don't want her to win either. I know she is too, right? I don't want her to win either. I am neither a Hillary or a Trump supporter. Two evil sides. Why since you said she's evil? Who are you going for, Lauren? Um, I like Trump better than Hillary, to be honest. Okay. Trump better than Hillary. Look, I, I agree. They're both full of shit. Oh, yeah. But one is less full of shit. Right, right. Yeah. Wait, okay. You have to add. I'm, not, okay. I'm, be, I'm being objective. Why do you feel like Trump is less full of shit than Hillary? By like a nanometer. Because um, for personal reasons that I can't really discuss. Oh, what the hell? I can't use that. I don't really no like to show my religious views. But That's okay. I, I, That's okay. I like how he's not so... He's not only secular. He also, you know, he participates in prayer with rabbis and churches and stuff. What do you mean since he started running for president yeah, he started least, doing that? At least he does that though. Since know? he started running for president? At least he does it. Since he started running for it's president? Still action. <laughs> it's still an action. I thought that. It's still, I that it's still like, a it's still gesture. Action. It's still yeah. a show of good faith. Exactly. It's still a show of and who has reaching done across. That? Right, I mean, right, right. That's true. Who's done that? Like, I mean, Obama, but... Um, he, yeah, Obama shit. still hasn't done... He still hasn't... I mean, Trump has done stuff that Obama, you know, didn't... Didn't even do, right? Yeah. yeah. Like I mean, when I lose his damn mind? I'm sorry, I'm listening to can you. I steal, <laughs> can I steal one of these American Oh, yes. Yeah, I sure. thought you didn't smoke. <laughs> Uh-oh. Today. I, I'm, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's just when I smell it, I have to, like... Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, and it's interesting because... I'm, I've I've never voted major party in my life. I just I don't. I, had I don't. A speech at the Green Party. So I don't. I know you did. Um, I saw that and it was great. It was I, so unexpected. Uh, well, and uh, you know, to me, it's something that and you've heard me say it before. Two poles don't make a wigwam. That's true. You know, it, two two walls don't make a house. That makes a lean to. And it I really don't want to live in a lean to. Party system. It shouldn't always be the two party well, system. Come on, man. I, don't, I agree. It I shouldn't. mean, that's common sense, man. Because yeah. it makes both of them go at each other hard. Yeah. But if, it's, if yeah. there's another one or a fourth one, it makes kind of everybody say, you know what? We might need to work together because we're not going to do this split thing. But. Right. Well, and that's just it. it. It really leads to the ultimate pendulum swing in the popularity contest every few years that leads to what we're in right now, where it's like, you either got this choice or that choice, and ain't neither one of them shining gems of what we should be looking for, you know. Um, and really, we have we have a lot of issues in this country that we really need to fix as far as politics go. You know, we were talking the other day about just term limits in Congress. Those yeah, we, are the dudes that actually write the laws. Yeah. There's no way you're going to affect change by people that have been in Congress for like 30 are years. You yes, up to a lifetime. Date? Are you up to date, like... As far as conspiracies and oh, and that's all Chris needs to hear. Oh, like, oh, 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 she's on, oh, she's on my level. Wait a minute, <laughs> she's on my level. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take my headphones off. I love now. conspiracy, Lauren, because <laughs> you just piped up with that, and we got like. Four minutes left in this part of the yeah, episode. Yeah. What you got? What you so got? we're gonna he's, he's we're gonna, gonna commercial break and come back. Yeah, to I'm down with it. We're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick. I'm break. known as a conspiracy and guy. Really. When we come back, 
Uh, we're oh, going to talk Lord. with Lauren about political conspiracy. Uh, that's all she had to say. <laughs> oh, sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> Elvis is on that go. UFO, I tell you. Oh, sweet Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> when we get back, everybody, right after this. <laughs> and we are back, everybody, with part two of episode 65. Uh, and Lauren was actually just getting into... Uh, some political conspiracies yeah, here, the best kind. Uh, that she wanted to talk about. Uh, go ahead, Lauren. Go go ahead with those political conspiracies that you wanted to talk about. What was that? What was that? Well, y'all might not be ready for these. That's all right. Ooh, very, throw the first one out. Very throw, radical. Throw. Very You'd radical. You'd be surprised what I'm ready for. <laughs> well, um, first off, I feel like I, I don't want to vote for Hillary because... I think she's in deep with some crazy shit. Like, I feel mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. she has this, there's this certain, um, what's she, the word? Please tell me the word. I don't know. She's got know. a trail of bodies behind her? Yeah, that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. They have, they. Right. As far as her, um. Whitewater, Benghazi, all kind of stuff. Like, they want, they want, I don't know. I forgot what the, um, the name of the mm-hmm. little society is. Yeah. But they believe that, you know... Masons, maybe, or some other? I don't huh? know, but... Yeah. Um, they believe that as a population, there should only be a certain amount of people. Oh, no, I do yeah, agree with that yeah, bullshit. Yeah. There's way too many people yeah. on the damn planet. Yeah. The Georgia Guidestones. <laughs> well, there, there are numerous societies. One of, one of them is the Luciferians. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's interesting to me that there, that there are numerous temples and stuff like that going up to Baal across the world that are all UN countries. Um, and there is even one that's happened here in America. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, you know, there there are some interesting secret societies in America. You sure know, is. one of them we were talking off air about Alex Jones. He's a local celebrity here, um, stuff like that. One of the ways he actually made his bones in America. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing him on the Art Bell. Show what got me on years ago, years ago, um, and it was him infiltrating Bohemian Grove. Mm-hmm. And Bohemian Grove is actually one of those things. It's kind of like Skull and Bones, where there's a bunch of people that belong. To it, Skull and Bones is, of course, you know, associated Yale, with the Yale it's a, University. A special Yale Club, elite. but, but Yale. the people at Bohemian Grove are from all aspects of high society. Yeah, um, not just Yale alumni, leaders of the like world, that. leaders of the world, leaders of industry, and stuff like that. And they supposedly put on this whole sacrifice to Mullock. You know, and and ball in the woods of um, California. It's yeah, called Bohemian yeah. Grove and Natural he was, Woods. He was the first person to ever infiltrate it and actually get video footage of these people doing this What's ceremony. Alex Jones. Okay. Um, did he cross the streams and went over there? Oh, he did some crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Like Oddly enough, really he was across a stream <laughs> when he videotaped. <laughs> that's true. <Go. laughs> but that's how that's how he really yeah. like made his tracks in the world. And right. uh, you know, he's done a lot of investigative journalism since then. And, and the story, of, the story itself, like when you tell it, longer, like a lot of people that. would like like immediately discredit it as saying, "Oh man, that's so far fetched. That's crazy stuff." You know, because the actual Bohemian Grove stuff is is really far out there yeah. when you speak of it. It and you tell it, but really, what happened was when Alex Jones actually infiltrated it and and did the the video and and snuck out all the footage and the facts on it. It's like, whoa, this stuff actually happens, and it's insane. Mock yeah. sacrifices in the woods. You get your presidents out there, ex presidents, leaders of the world, and they're doing some crazy stuff, you know? Yeah, and they're also. I mean, I mean, like as far as like decreasing the population of you know Mm -hmm. the world globally like I believe that they are also trying Mr. Bill Gates believes in that fuck up our DNA who believes in that? Bill Gates oh Bill Gates they don't want us to um, be human anymore they want us to be hybrids or aliens or Mm-hmm. Whatever, I believe that she's associated with that as well. That's why. I'm, oh, I think so. You know, 
Yeah. All kinds of shit. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but mixed, yes. they're like mixed breeding DNA. And oh, that. yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've definitely heard the theories of that. And I, I know quite a few people that ascribe to that drink. as well. Um, you enjoy that drink. I very much do. Like, and you th- <laughs> no more, no more human more beings. beings. I don't, I don't doubt at all Hybrids. that she's a part of that because, I mean, I think she was... Uh, uh, I, you know uh, the Bilderberg group. She was there too for for that, and and uh, you know uh, things that they talk about is, is, is so secretive. You know, I'm sure they guard it by by death. You know, and, and stuff like that, and stuff leaks out on topics and stuff every now and then. But uh, yeah. unfortunately, one of the guys has passed away. That that was a huge push on that. Uh, but um, you know, uh, such groups like that that you know govern and make the laws for almost the world, and and these guys go around with these secret this secret group, you know, the Bilderberg group that have these meetings. It's it's just insane that it doesn't yeah. matter. Law doesn't apply to them, and they have these groups, and they make make decisions or ideas or what they plan for the for the world for us, you know. Right, and then I have something to say towards, go ahead. towards you know students in college and people coming out of college you know they say you know Hillary doesn't have power you know it's someone else who makes the decisions Mm -hmm. she doesn't have that kind of power but she still has power you know she still has power so well it's it's a point that I made to Confucius on Sunday whenever we were just hanging out and shooting the shit was uh the fact that the president Technically, doesn't have any power, but as long as the military is active somewhere, right. he has all the power. He is he is technically commander in chief, right. and he can pass or Thank she you. can pass Thank you for saying any that. laws that they want, right. and those are enacted. And that technically makes them an emperor. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't make them a president. You talking about the emperor from? Star yeah. Wars? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. exactly what I was exactly. going to say. Does yeah, he have yeah. a Darth Vader? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but you know, Darth Vader carried it out, but you never saw the real guy. It literally gives and them extra yeah. constitutional power. Especially when it comes, you see all these videos on YouTube about mil- military law, or what is it? Oh no, no, martial law. Martial, martial law. law. Yeah, you got martial it. Law. And martial law has been it. declared a few times in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's scary. It, it is. It is scary. And Searching see, for the Boston is bomber. Something, is something that we've talked about on the show before is the militarization of police across America. Yeah, like police um, don't need tanks. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. And it was funny because one of the things that was brought up in the presidential debate was, you know, how police are outgunned on the street. And it's like, how the hell are police outgunned on the street? They have access to all military surplus. Yeah. Like, yes. everything but jets yeah. and helicopters. There is a point, and I'm like, not to spoil And Sam's, like, Luke surface Cage, to air missiles. And Luke Cage, there's a point where, I'm not going to spoil too much, but there's right. a point where the police start trying to upgrade their weaponry to deal with superhumans. Yeah. Which, right. from, the perspective, right. from the perspective of, well, we can't, we, we have to be able to combat these people just in case they go to the left. Right. right. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it, if you... It's like, it's, it's kind of promoting... Dehumanization, like they want us to be hybrids, aliens. Whatever. Well, and Mixed DNA. one of the things that we talked about was uh, was the the Dallas police shootings mm-hmm. right after they happened, um, and one of the dangerous precedents that was set that was not only set but was followed through with the recent North Dakota protests, where in North Dakota they have passed the fact that they can use non lethals on drones now, so now they can use pepper spray bullets. You know, all kinds of stuff on drones instead of having. It just so happens there. they pass this during the whole uh, oil pipeline deal, right? And yeah, while absolutely. they're protesting and all that. And, and just it, at the same time, uh, we had the first actual drone strike against a citizen in, in America in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Where, I thought that was very strange. And, and me and Stephen, me and Stephen, we were at my house. It. We were live. watching it live, watching live and I heard the explosion. Yeah. I want to yeah. know. It, so it happened. Where were y'all at? We were literally at, at my house. We're, in in, in East Austin yep. here, yeah. like right down the road, it's like uh, two something in the morning. Yeah, or something it was two a.m. It was in Dallas, but you still saw it. From yeah, yeah, we mm-hmm. were watching the live feed, live feed. on okay, on I think okay. it was ABC or something, something. like that. Mm-hmm. And literally, they had the mm-hmm. audio going, and they had a helicopter going, and you heard an explosion, mm-hmm. and that's all you heard. That's all you. Uh, heard. We didn't know if it was a flashbang yeah. or what. Right. Um, but it later came out that they had used a robot, right. a bomb, a bomb disposal robot with a grenade to go in right. and take the guy out. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those like, hmm, that sets a really dangerous precedent, I think. Right. Um, for right. drone strikes on right. American soil. 
Right. Um, and, uh, you know, just talking conspiracy. And that, that reminds me of an uh, um, uh, article I saw, I think, today when, you know, with all this stuff with Julian Assange about to come out with some stuff to this morning at 2 o'clock, he's going to come out with some stuff. But, uh, you know, Hillary was saying that... Julian Assange is always coming out with some yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know, right? Thank you. I yeah, got, yeah, yeah, no, okay, yeah, Julian yeah, Assange at yeah. one point in time the was... The fuck off your yeah. phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at one point in time, let's see, he's multitasking, but... um. At one point in time, he was the like the forerunner of all the um, intelligence information. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. More. But he's, at this point, he's turned into a goddamn media whore. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, exactly. like you said last yeah. night, he said, I'm, I'm, "I got the October surprise for the Clinton campaign." Yeah. And yeah. All he said was, "Well, yeah, we're gonna just update. release it. Don't say it. And yeah, hold just, it." And my thing with it is yeah. like, why did it take the New York Times to get Trump's tax return from '95 in the mail, but you couldn't find that shit? But you run a cyber website. Like, I feel like Julian Assange is, because even Edward Snowden doesn't get along with Julian Assange. I feel like he's become a fucking yeah. media whore who wants attention for the website right. in order to keep himself in the public eye. Like, yeah, but, yeah. I, I kind of feel that way myself. It, but it was the fact that uh, one of, uh, I think either, I think it was Hillary that said it, uh, her exact words was, why can't we take him out with the drone? And yeah. uh, and it was like a Shit. quote. It was a quotation. Yeah. And it was like, really? It was like, uh, didn't we talk about this on Dudes and Beer like a couple of weeks ago or yeah, something? Yeah, you know? no. And, was, and, and Nelson didn't mentioned. understand why, you know, like me and you were against like government using drones to take people out. And it's for that simple reason. I mean, yeah. you're bypassing judge and jury. Well, you know? well like, I mean, it, the funny thing is. Obama literally just went to the Philippines and got shit from the president of the Philippines who passed a law and said, hey, police, if you kill a fucking drug dealer in the street, you know, oh, well. We're not gonna, we're not gonna like treat you like a criminal. We're gonna probably celebrate you right now. Well, you know, I've always um, said, you know, from, and, from a realistic point of view, and you know, we're talking about conspiracy theories. I'm talking about from a factual point of view. Obama's yeah. foreign policy um, policy is more. Um, I want to. I'm trying to think of the word. Is more well it aggressive just, than George Bush's was. Well, it, absolutely, and it was just funny to me that his whole argument was that these are extrajudicial killings. What I, I think these, what are, these are killings without a trial, and it's like right, what yeah. the hell is well, the drone under program? Under the Obama, uh, Obama administration, <laughs> the, the, an administration the drone that I do program respect, is nothing but under the Obama administration. Killings. He had it to where it classified if you kill a terrorist and his family, the, t- the family is classified as terrorists as well to bring down the number of innocent people that were killed during drone right. strike. Sure, sure. Um, because once again, when you're reporting the news to people and saying, "Hey, we killed 590." Right. Innocent people, the number comes down yeah. when you say, "Well, they're in the house with terrorists, so they might be involved with terrorism as right. well." Kill the whole they, family, exactly. Because drone, like I was telling Chris when we were talking on Sunday, drone strikes don't go after just the, the, drone strikes don't kill one person; they kill a whole block. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. So if the terrorists is at home cooking yeah, dinner with family, kill, yeah. even, they, they, they kill the whole damn building. Bro. Yeah. Because even when they came down, to Luke kill, Cage hitting at the bottom of that shit. Spoiler alert! Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when it came to killing Osama bin Laden, the main yeah. the main uh, uh, argument they had was: should we send a drone in to just blow up the whole damn house, or should yeah. we send in troops? Which is ironic because they sent in troops for some reason, but I think they sent in troops because they wanted to have the. They um, want the buffer. They want the buffer, and they, they wanted want to the personally say, you know what, we killed just him. Because mm-hmm. it would have been way different if they said, you know what, we killed everybody in that damn house, from right. kids yeah. to women. Right. But normally, if it wasn't Osama bin Laden, if it's like a, like a second in command or just a, a military leader, if with a ISIL or Al Qaeda, we don't, none of us, most of us don't know, they'll just throw a drone down there and take out the whole damn yeah. block. Just take out the yeah. whole damn block. And then classify every innocent person as a terrorist because they happen to be close to that person who was a terrorist. Right. Yeah. And that's Absolutely. not right. That's not exactly. right. Oh. Well, well, and that's that's the whole point is that it it is an extrajudicial killing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, why are you going over and what's the name of that guy? You you would know. I mean, you might. Not I think know. I know what you get at the, uh, the, the American Al uh, Qaeda. Okay, he was a Muslim guy, right? Yeah, he went. He came from yeah. he's from here, but he went. Yeah, over there. yeah, exactly. And they and killed his son and they, later and they, on too. Right? Yeah, they killed him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and when they like, killed his son, he was in a cafe with other people, and they yeah, all died they, because yeah. they, it was a drone strike. A lot of people were like, well, why didn't he, you know, because yeah. they tried to say, the, well, these yeah. people aren't American citizens, so they don't deserve the same rights. As, but he said, this guy yeah. was, you still drop a drone up, on dude. Yeah, yeah, that's messed up. They're human, yeah. dude. Um, I know who yeah, you're exactly. talking about. I cannot remember I can't think his name, name either. Offhand. Um, but, but yeah, no, I know I, who you know. I've always said Obama's foreign policy um, uh, it, it, uh, approach is, is worse. Because with George Bush, George Bush had the mentality of, you talk, know what, we'll send in ground troops hey, to deal with it. But Obama would come from the perspective of, you know talk, what? D- 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 sorry, go ahead. We could send in tr- drones yeah. and just wipe out the and whole And wipe thing. them out. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, let's just not But out. then you, you do that type of shit, and then you wonder why certain yeah. people feel some type of way towards yeah. our country. You don't even yeah. need the defense you, of the you paint the nar- you, can, you can paint the narrative politically to say, well, these people don't like the fact that we go to McDonald's and wear bikinis, but you don't <laughs> paint the perspective that, well, yeah. we blew up the whole goddamn block, yeah. and there's dead kids and body parts 
laying around. Right. So he's saying, and on top of that, we sent him to Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. So he's saying people look at it and say, you know what? I was living my life. One guy, I never forget, I listened to Vice. You when we talk about Vice. Yep, yep. He said he was in Guantanamo Bay because what a lot of people don't know is when we first invaded Iraq and Afghanistan, we would mm-hmm. drop pamphlets in those towns, in those yep. countries, hmm. and say, if you turn in somebody who we think's a terrorist, we'll deal with it. Oh, that's it, Nazi right there. And one guy, he said he, he was an electrician. He was putting in somebody's lights. Got His neighbor didn't like him because the lights didn't come on. So they reported him. He went to Guantanamo Bay for five years. Oh. Five years. Yeah. And he finally, he finally just got out. And he was Jeez. like, I'm cool with it. I understand. But imagine how many people got sent to Guantanamo Bay because right. the family was a neighbor was trying to make money. Right. Yeah. And they come out and they're like, well, holy shit, my mind is just... On, on the topic of conspiracy theory, I... Uh, the one that I keep waiting to pop off is freaking Bob uh, Bo Bergdahl. Oh, Bergdahl. The, that disappeared. The, Remember the guy the, that disappeared. The soldier. Cool. The soldier that Sarah, actually yeah, the podcast serial. Yeah, the the guy that actually like walked off his base. Yeah, yeah. The guy yeah. walked off, left a note, and said, "I I am defecting. I am leaving the United States. I'm leaving my citizenship, and I'm joining the Taliban." And went there for years, and then they were actually made to go find him and rescue him and bring him back. And they were pissed about that, apparently. Yeah, yeah, uh, no. Well, the, the military on the ground were like, yo, yeah. why are we going? Yeah, this guy he, literally yeah, walked off. He didn't, get, yeah. he didn't get kidnapped. He walked the yeah, hell out. Why were we he, even finding this guy? He was a deserter. He, yeah, he wasn't was a, a prisoner of war. He nah. didn't get captured. Like He, he walked, walked off, off his own will. And was a sympathizer. And, that was, and that's why Cyril was so good. Side. It's funny because Cyril is literally off because of that case. Um, but Cyril is like one of the top ten podcasts in the world. Yeah, yeah. But Cyril even made the point to say, you know, he literally just, like you said, walked off. Yeah, he just walked off. He walked off. Yeah. There was no, no, there he was, was no on kind of guard. Fight that happened. He just left yeah, in the middle no. of the night. So why he, should we even worry about In a place that where he knew that yeah. the only people that could find him would he be was, the Taliban. He was going to be guard duty, and he walked off his freaking post and left a note saying that I am a sympathizer, mm-hmm. I'm leaving, um, I now join the other side. And but the other side didn't, yeah. didn't like right. him that much. And, then and so right. we had to what, release ass. about five top officials on the other side, like five Taliban's or some shit like that, in exchange to get him back. Yeah, yeah. It I was, mean, it was top so guys. Well, you know, the other narrative shit. is that America doesn't negotiate with terrorists, but we do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't believe yeah. we don't. That's bullshit. Because oh, uh, the because whole power of money when, die ran recently. What, especially when terrorists come from the perspective of, <laughs> look, we have something you want. You yeah. can give us what we want. Yeah. Like you said, when uh, we get the Iran deal, yeah. they didn't want American money. They wanted yeah. everybody else's money. Yeah. Because they didn't believe in the power of the dollar of America. But Well, I don't blame them one bit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get Netflix subscriptions. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> It's it's, know, like, I, it's like Cottonmouth and, and the other the other mob guy, you know, exchanging money for the guns. You know, it's like I got something you want, I want that too. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. make a deal. You know, let's make a deal. Exactly, exactly. And it, you know, all that kind of stuff happens. And it, whenever whenever you look at the fact of you know it, with Hillary's emails and stuff like that, the fact that she had a private server, it's interesting that. Congressmen and House representatives are not bound by the same rule. They're allowed to take in emails on a private email there. None of it is kept. None of my it thing is with that, is, that is so weird, yeah. My thing with the Hillary email thing, honestly, I think a lot of it is bullshit. A narrative has been pushed by the Republicans. But while she did make a mistake, she's not the first, last, or the only one that does that. Right, I was And two, say. George W. Bush, as a president, deleted 22 million emails before he left office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think there is mm-hmm. things that Hillary is doing that she shouldn't be fucking doing. But because Republicans are so caught up in trying to make sure she don't become president, they focus on this one thing and right. try to pull yep. the narrative out. But it's like, yeah. you know what? You could easily focus on the fact of what she did as a first lady because she did uh, support like TPP, NAFTA, yep. and of course the um, three strikes federal, uh, federal mandates. She did push those. You could easily attack her on those. But because of the fact right. that y'all keep y'all are so scared of her becoming president, you jump on the email scandal. Yeah. What's even worse is that once again she's running against Donald Trump. His yeah. whole life is a goddamn scandal. The yeah, reason yeah, he became yeah. in the national prominence in 1973 is because he got sued by the Justice Department for racial discrimination for housing projects. Yep. So yep. why would you yep. why would you use the email scandal to try to push a narrative? That's my thing with that. It was yeah. a boy, it, it, it was fucked up. She was stupid. She did lie about it, but once again, she's a politician. And right. You don't get mad at politicians yeah, for yeah. lying? Really? That <laughs> yeah. is the history of politics. All that's, politicians lie. Show me a do. politician that don't lie. Exactly. They <laughs> all lie. But you compare it to a guy who is literally lied his... Like, I, I, I remember... i never forget when Donald Trump was on Celebrity Apprentice. He would brag about he was a billionaire. I said, he's not a fucking billionaire. He's never been a billionaire. He's lying. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> he's lying. yeah. but, you know, like I said, lying is just part of the job. You he doesn't even yeah. have the backing of any CEO that's on the top 100 Fortune. Fortune list. 100? Yeah, none yeah. of them. They don't want to deal with him. Yeah, none of them. But yeah. it's like, okay, but like yeah. I said, he is, yeah, it's like, she is so lucky she is running against him. 
Because yeah. he is, he's, there's nothing that she, they can point at her and that she can't point right back. She is so lucky. Because Hillary Clinton is a horrible running candidate. Right, She's right, a horrible right, right, candidate. Right, right. That's why Obama shot past. That's why Bernie Sanders was able to catch up to her. Because yeah. Bernie Sanders literally walked out there like he just got done running to the bus with his hair all over the goddamn place and <laughs> suit all ruffled up. <laughs> yeah. But he was literally almost on her ass. Yeah. <laughs> but the email thing, I'm like, man, come on. Like, they even tried to use the Benghazi thing. Like, the Benghazi thing that she said that it was the, uh, it was a video that came out yep. that made those people turn, you know, turn against the Benghazi. And the, the uh, when I think it was the Judiciary Committee came out and said, yeah, there was a video that incited those people. Um, but for Hillary, it's like... Man, you gotta do way better than the fucking emails, man. You gotta do if that's the what you're gonna go out, you gotta do way better than emails. You, you, you know, you know where the, the the problem is is that we need to go with Bernie Sanders because he could fix the flux capacitor and we can go back and change all this. Marty, <laughs> Marty, yeah, just about your parents, Marty. <laughs> yeah. But we you know it's it's but, but Bernie and his credit pushed Hillary more to left because Hillary tried to come out as a centrist. She was like, you know what? I, oh, no, I agree, yeah. Republicans, Democrats. Bernie said, nope, nope, yeah. fuck them. Come over to my well, side. Well, it was she interesting was. to me because on uh, Meet the Press. On uh, on PBS, uh, she was literally sitting there talking before the DNC about how Hillary was, or, or not Hillary, but Bernie was there um, because the Democratic Party is the party of the center left, and they'd had the center for a long time, but they were missing the left. Well, you know, and Bernie the- had that, so they brought him there as the just in case, where regardless, the two would unite. And be able to have, and you know, be the, able to have the DNC had a lot of Republican themes. Like they were like, we're for war, and we're about trying to get this. That I'm like, yo, there's a lot of Republican because usually right. Republicans are the main ones with the big American flag behind them, which I'm talking about war, war, war. Yeah, but yeah. The Republicans have, because of Trump, have gotten so goddamn far to the right, it doesn't make any more sense. They're just like, you know yeah. what? Just like Trump, just just like Trump, whatever he says, we with it. Whatever they've adopted the damn wall as one of their platforms. I'm like, that is. <laughs> Y'all know good and goddamn what? Even Rick Perry himself said that's not going to be a wall. Yeah. But y'all have adopted that platform yeah, because be no we're like, you know what? We just want to, we want something. So just yeah. whatever he says, go with it. Go with it. Fuck it. But I will, it's going to be interesting to see what happens if he loses, how fast Republicans run away from it. Because remember when Sarah Palin oh. got out there in 2008? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were like, yeah, yeah. Sarah Palin is the future Sarah. Republican Party. As soon as they lost, like, oh, she's a batshit crazy bitch. Fuck that. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should do it, huh? So. Yeah. And she faded away. Is that, well, she got a show on Fox News because if you're crazy, you get a show on Fox News. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens if Trump loses, how fast yeah. the Republican Party, like, just. Because, like, Ted Cruz, I think, was trying to calculate in his mind, like, if I just don't endorse Trump, then. When he loses badly, they'll look at me as a hero. It's the same yeah. thing, because if you look at it, President Barack Obama ran in 2008 as, I didn't vote for the Iraq war. Hillary did. I didn't. I'm a hero. I, I knew from the jump it was going to be full of shit, and people latched onto that. Yeah. You know, Ted Cruz is probably banking on the fact that if I don't endorse Trump, when he loses, gets his ass whooped, I could be like, I told y'all he wasn't going to win. I was right the whole time. Yeah. But he eventually caved in the press. And he should have done that. He should have stuck with it, because <laughs> yeah. I think the RNC probably said, you know what, when you run again, we're not going to support you. He's yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know what? Never mind. I like Trump. Right, I mean, right, so my right, wife yeah. was fat, and my dad was a jackass, but I still I still support him. But. <laughs> yeah. You got some Goldman Sachs behind you? Come on. <laughs> Come on with it, man. Come on with it, man. Yeah, man. Politics is crazy. It's crazy. Um, I Honestly, my main interest is local politics, mm-hmm. because it's more of a, like a participation one-on-one type thing but national politics like you said the electoral college is more run the electoral college a lot of people don't notice is that yeah. it's run by super delegates and delegates yeah. that look at the Ooh, popular vote super and say, delegate. you know what okay I'll go with that because I don't want to lose my super delegate or delegate position mm. but Latin, local politics is more I can vote for the mayor because there's no goddamn delegates. Local politics are actually what impact you more than anything else mm-hmm. most of the time um, that's what controls your tax rates, everything else locally. So true, I agree. It's 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 it's, it's a big big misnomer that um, national politics a should be affecting you to begin with um, because they shouldn't. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't. They should be affecting people... some of the regulations of your state nationally, but other than that, um, that's what you have representatives. And stuff like that for is to take care of that. Other than that, you're supposed to be worried about your local politics. True. Right. true. That's true. That's true. What, what yep. Lauren, do you have an opinion on? Yeah. Um, I really take his word for it. Like, he's really knowledgeable on these things. And I've so far, I've found a real good agreement with him. 
Like yeah. he's into the same stuff I'm into. So well, fuck me and Steve. <laughs> 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 not, not, not fuck you. Not I'm just yeah. saying the way he breaks. No, fuck me. <laughs> the way he breaks it down, I'm like, Makes yeah, sense. I yeah. agree. <laughs> yeah, Chris, and Chris, yeah, yeah, Chris worked with Alex Jones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Alex Jones is the king. Can I use the watch channel? Well, uh, well, and you know, to me, there's a difference between tying a web and being able to see a fractal point of view where right. numerous things impact each other, right. um, and actually thing taking things to a worst case scenario, um, which is prone in that movement sometimes. Uh, which which is a lot of what this show is about is actually kind of sure, true exploring these points because right. these points aren't insane to explore. Um, there are actual news stories about these points. These stories exist and do your own due diligence. They're there, um, but do we have to extrapolate it out to the worst case scenario? Do we have to extrapolate it out to the end of civilization and the end of America as we know it? No, I really don't think that we do. Because I really still hold faith in the the commonness of man and the common mentality of people and the concept that most people hold a concept of America that is there for the greater good and greater of all of us. So I really don't think that we'll get to a point... Um, where hey, with hey I'm I'm gonna I, uh, I don't ass. have applause on the effects anymore. <laughs> gone, but I can do this um, while I talk <laughs> about it. Why he's doing his why yeah, doing right. presidential speech? Yeah, Ain't you know we can we can't have the patriotic fife underneath That's us right. while we talk. I'm crying because, real tears because <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> It is a concept of America that we've lost. We do have a, like, that's what half of this show was about, was the fact of, for some reason in this country, uh, we no longer allow the conversations of politics, religion, and economics around a beer at a bar. And damn it, that's where the fuck this country started. Preach. Was, was people talking about politics. And it was topics politics. like this, yeah. and it was topics that they now tell you don't even speak of, like, don't don't yeah. speak of politics, don't speak of religion. Well, and that's what they were talking that, about. That's what you have to talk about yeah. in order to move p- policy forward, in order to move life forward, in order to m- open a paradigm and a thought process between the different cultures that right. are America. I, you know, my thing with conspiracy theories, you know, I'm, I'm very open minded because I, me and Chris had this conversation Sunday. I, I don't know everything. Yeah. And what bothers me about either side when they're like so stuck in their their train of thought that they won't yeah. think of, they won't listen to anybody else's opinion. Like yeah, they'll say, right. you know what? Like a conspiracy theorist will tell you, I know what I'm talking about. You're blind. You're a sheep. You don't know what you're talking about. And I, yeah. If you tell them, well, do you ever think that you might be a sheep to somebody else's opinion? Nope, nope, I'm not. Same thing on the other side. Like right. I to tell somebody else, like, well, you, you think right. you might be getting fed bad information? No, nope, I'm not. I'm not. Minded, yeah, be open minded because yeah. you. Don't, we all don't know. I have admitted exactly. my wrongness numerous times on this show where I thought something was the case and we look it up and the fact is it ain't. And I'm like, well, right there you have it. That's the point of yeah. being objective. But um, most yeah. people aren't objective. Because oh, well, like, with, it, like we said with the age of the internet, you kind of, you have sometimes a lot of small minded yeah. people, in my opinion, yeah, will go I to see. a place where everybody agrees with them right. and say, well, you know, I've read on this website called buttfuck.com that they said that right. you know, Hillary Clinton yeah. is a power ranger on the weekends. Like you, no, they do that. I've run into kids that, uh, that go to UT and stuff like that and I might work with them or wherever <laughs> I meet these kids and stuff. And it's like, you know, I, I know a lot more stuff than they do. And it's like, really? Seriously, you think the world works like this or it's that way? And it's like, it's like to me, it's like even though they think they're like going to college or UT mm-hmm. or something like that, they they lack some type of education right. or history of, of the nation cool. and stuff like that. Cool. They they really miss the whole thing. And it's like, I don't know if it's at school. I think it is a lot of it at, at school. But actually, a lot of them get their news from social media. And it's like, hey, guys, you know, y'all got to do more research than that. You know, I, I'm at home doing research, at, you know, and like y'all just wake up and look at Facebook and say, oh, I saw this on Facebook. Saw it Facebook must be true. Right. Yeah. It must be true. Like, like you know, well, so, so-and-so's well, dead and he's still and alive. It's, you know, it's like, like we talked about in episode 64 with right. Tia where right, we exactly. were saying instead of doing actual reporting, the media is busy chasing headlines. Yeah. They are. You know, like even going back to your point, you know, Socrates said, I know that I know nothing. 
Which that's right. Exactly. That the smartest right. person in the world knows they don't know jack shit. Yeah. That's you right. Say, I know everything I need to know. You're like, you're, you're, you're yeah. lost. You know, that's what a child does. But That's it. And Socrates was a brilliant man. Exactly. Yeah. So, outside of the gay orgies. But, um, right. yeah. it, you know, from... <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> this is America. <laughs> Whatever is your thing is your thing. I, I'm not thing. knocking it. I'm just I'm not going to participate in no gay orgies. Right, right. right. If it's a bunch of women on top of me, it's I'm all for that. What? Not your thing? Hey, not my damn thing, Chris. I said it's over. Bye. I'm Get with Confucius. If it's just me and women, that's cool. <laughs> I'm all for that. You can eat me up all you want to. I just lay that with my hands up. But, um, I mean, you know, I don't know. I think, you know, we live in a society because there's so easy access to information that agrees with you that you don't have, like you said, as much open mind as you should. And me, I'm, I, I already know I don't know everything. I'm not in government. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck is going on over there. So, like, for instance, you posted a um, status about Howard Stern saying that, hey, I didn't say Donald Trump said he wasn't with the Iraq war. So, I, you know yeah. what I said? Wait a minute. Did you really say that? So, I, I did some research. And he did, what he said was... I didn't confirm that he wasn't with the war. I just confirmed he was on my damn show. Yeah. So, but of course... Yeah, if you read the article, yeah, it yeah, goes yeah. through... It, it, it breaks goes down, through but everything. news outlets say, Howard Stern blasts yeah, CNN. Right, right, right. Or, just that Howard Stern said, Trump, Donald Trump didn't say that. It's like, yeah, yeah. you need to... you'd be Because if you were on either side, you would say, well, Howard Stern said he did agree. And if you're on the other exactly. side, say, Howard Stern said he didn't agree. But you have to yeah. do the research and say, well... He was like, I have nothing to do with this shit. Keep me out of this. I just said he was on my damn show. I don't know what he was talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever. I just yeah. know he was on my show yeah. and said he, whatever. Well, like exactly. he said, I don't even know exactly. what the fuck I'm talking about half the time. Yeah. I'm just, I don't remember that show to you. I brought it up. Like, <laughs> I was watching the debate. I'm like, what I'm the fuck my here, name been brought up? I'm sitting here with the notebook <laughs> taking notes so that I can write the description for this stuff later. Because <laughs> I don't remember half the stuff once right. we're done with it. And sure, I go through and I listen to Well, you to guys it, have a but I don't way do a better hard. scenario in here. Where I don't, I don't. Do hard edits Human or anything beings, like man. that. Like this show, I do. this show is what we it forget is, more so. than we remember. I have, I exactly, <laughs> and it's probably best that way. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't. Okay, the liquor's starting to get to me. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, but it is something you know where where you get to the point where even now you know I pointed out to Stephen tonight. Hey, you know, look at those numbers on the wall behind you. Like what just on one platform, we got forty seven hours. Um, that's some content, you know. Whenever, you know, whenever you start talking about how often you've said things and what you've said, and One things platform. that you've said, and what what you've talked about, Jesus, God. Um, it gets to a point where, yeah, somebody would literally have to comb through all of that to find out what I've said. I'm, just happy. I'm, just, I'm <laughs> right. just happy that you guys didn't want to have a whole conversation about comic books as much no. as, <laughs> as, as much. we as we do the comic book yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a springboard. <laughs> it was a springboard. <laughs> and it was a great way to come yeah. in that yeah, fucking yeah, racist You would have lost me eventually because I don't know as much it's, it's funny as you like, guys do. You know, when me and Fred started the comic book podcast, we were very hesitant because we were like, yo, we, people don't think we're like like jackasses or punks or something like that. But Nerds. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, Y'all nerds and like that, like whatever, that. dude. Yeah, but, like, um, whatever. But we did it, and um, it took off. And we, for the beginning of like the first ten episodes, we had to like defend ourselves on every like major medium. We had to defend ourselves on Facebook in person. Yeah, like we're right. not like those guys. Like yeah. we really. I'll yeah. slap the shit out of you. Say something crazy to me, right. but um, <laughs> exactly. yeah. But a lot of times we'll go like do shows, and they'll invite us over, and we'll be like, okay, we're gonna talk about us being fresh, confused. I said, well, let's talk about X Men, like. This is not Thursday? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, you guys are the only show we've ever done where we talked about comic books and it wasn't on the Thursday. You're, you're trying yeah. to do the outside oh, thank you. of the, of the norm. To, uh, and then they, here they are like, hey, let's talk about, you know what I mean? Well, like, because we like, because, okay, the history of me and Fresh. Fresh was fresh before I met him. You can make the argument that Fresh discovered me. Fresh had a whole website called Fresh Prince of the ATX. <laughs> nice. And he was doing yep, underground dope. music. That's and dope. I was trying to start a record label, and I approached him and talked yeah. to him. And that's how we ended up linking up. Cool. So when you talk to both of us, is this like there's a whole like backstory with both <laughs> of us that people can talk about. People want to talk about comic books. We're like, you yeah. understand me and Fresh don't buy comic books? The only reason that I'm gonna, I need to give you the pay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna email it to you yeah. too. Oh, um, see. About like with comic blitz is because they deliver, give us comic books for free. I'm not buying any fucking comic books. Yeah. So, I mean, but <laughs> people want to talk about it because they think it like gets us in yeah. with us. I'm like, eh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna talk to me about that type of shit. But what well, well, what I mean, it, it's something that I I love. And I absolutely see the reflection of the storylines in modern day society. Yeah, especially with what's going on nowadays. Well, see, the reason why, you know, it's easy to like, talk good to lord, like, good lord, I could see the fucking mutant registration movement. Yeah, happening in Congress like next month. 
Like right after the election, I could I could see it's them easier, passing a mutant registration bill people, in December. It's easier talking about comic books <laughs> of people that know comic books because people that know comic books can bring up questions that are interesting that we haven't heard before. But yeah. you talk to somebody who doesn't know comic books, they'll say like, "Well, why do you like Spider Man? Like, what the kind of fucking question is that? What's yeah, that? Yeah, My four year old likes com- like Spider Man. He's a badass. Hey, what the fuck <laughs> next, you talking about? What the next, fuck are you so talking that, about, ladies? You want to talk about something? I can talk about the Godfather. Why I like the Godfather? I can talk yeah, about yeah. why I watch, yeah. why I like politics. But <laughs> how about like, you say why you don't like him? Exactly. Like, for instance, yeah. Fresh is a political science major. He loves politics. And Fresh is yeah. like you say, he's the historian of politics. Right. So yeah. you can talk about that. But if we have people like approach us, like we'll do a convention, like we met us at. And we'll yep. be sitting there, and me and Fresh will probably be high drunk because you can't do conventions high sober. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we'll be sitting there, yeah. and people walk up on us. Hey, I got to do one of these. Hey, that sounds fun. Do you guys watch Flash? I'm like, no, I don't. And they'll still ask me questions. Why not? Why don't you like Flash? I think it's a great episode. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm high and drunk. Yeah. I want to hit you in the face. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Stop talking to me. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. I don't, I don't watch Flash. <laughs> I don't watch anything. Else like, I will movies. say, I like the I lady. The I like few, the lady that came up seasons. and it was talking about how she had it all broke down when it was like, what was it? Either you're on the rebel side or the dark side. Remember? Okay, because me and Fred, <laughs> good customer service. I love that story. And Lauren, Lauren, don't understand what I'm talking about. Good customer service when you interact with the person who's trying to buy something, right? Yeah. So we we'll always say some bullshit like, hey, you know, if we were uh, in Star Wars, we would be on the Empire side because they have health care benefits. <laughs> Apparently, this chick had actually thought about that question and had a whole <laughs> breakdown about the schedule. Who she be? On. I was like. Oh my God! She was talking yeah. for like five hours, and I finally um, asked her because I left and came back, and she was still talking. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked her, I said, "Do you have a boyfriend?" No, why? I said, "Because I, I, I just can assume that there's no man that would give you yeah, yeah, yeah. for this damn long." And you're clearly a virgin, right? Yeah, I never had sex. I'm like, I know you haven't. <laughs> I know you haven't had sex. There's no way no man would deal with you for this long. Yeah, there's That's no so way. Dope. It was. It was <laughs> no, she didn't even buy anything. That's what pissed One person like looking the opposite way too. He wouldn't even pay attention. Oh, oh, yeah, I didn't God. buy anything either. No, but see, but you, you and your heart. <laughs> Thank I you. I like man. that. I like that story. <laughs> that story, I love that. But see, story. he, he pro- Chris provided something that is very essential to what we're trying to do. Yeah, she didn't buy shit. <laughs> she just talked and then walked off. I'm like, you sit here for five hours and didn't even buy nothing. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 come on now. It was great. But now I will say, you know, my main goal for comic book convention is to she was unique. What to have to sleep with somebody who likes comic books because I've been trying to angle it, but it's Uh-oh. hard. But it's hard to angle it because most of these girls just want to do some Luke Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Does anime comic books count? Yes, they count. Yeah, I guess sure. So. You like anime? No, seriously, seriously. They do, do you, count. Do you read anime comic books? No, I don't read anime. Do you like anime? Yes, I do. What's your favorite anime? Yeah. Um... Dark I don't channel. remember their names. Sailor Moon. Yeah, then you know, like anime. I like, anime. I like some. I, I like some old school I anime. I, I just don't. Google them and they. Pop yeah. Up. I yeah, like yeah, some right. old school Akira. I love. I love. Uh, Vampire Hunter D. I just saw. Oh, I Vampire think I posted D. it on. I, I posted it on uh, Comic Book Guys the other day. Uh, the, uh, the new Ghost in the Machine that's coming out. That was a, Ghost in the Machine was a badass know. fucking the, the anime. Only anime back in I know the 90s is Sailor Moon, so Naruto, dope. Pokemon, yeah. and oh, right. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and see, those, those were all, yeah. like, regular all broadcast know. anime. The ones I was about was, like, Vampire Hunter D and stuff. I, mean, I remember, remember Vampire D. I remember direct, Vampire. Direct, uh, direct to video release and, you know, like, Ghost in the Shell was great. Hey, what and was that downtown? It, it was Brody, hey, Brody, that, Brody something downtown, uh, campus, the theater, the movie theater know. downtown uh, for the students downtown on UT no, uh, campus. And, yeah, and, and they had, I mean, this was years ago. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they had uh, Vampire D like stuff, like yeah. films playing and stuff. I remember that. Yeah, I love I love old school stuff yeah, I like that. I love some called. old school Voltron. Ooh, I like Voltron. Ooh, uh, I had some Voltron. one from the nineties that I would probably say that what? I was wicked into was uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Sa- well, Space Ghost Coast to Coast was just the fucking shit because I grew up watching Space Ghost. So Space is- Ghost! That shit That's was where awesome. that came from. Oh, okay, Bjork, I remember that. Bjork was his wife. Yeah, Bjork was his wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember my niece was very small and she knew all the Barack songs. That guy that played all the, the Barack guy. songs. Yeah. Like, but, um... um I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm going to go off on a tangent about something that has nothing to do, do with it. talking. Do it. That's all right. Do it. Um, we got about six minutes left. Do tangent it. away. Do it. Tangent um, away, brother. Do it. Shit, I forgot what I was going to talk about. That's all right. Oh, I love The Godfather because it's the best movie of all time. Yeah, oh, some um, good shit. And I say Godfather 1. Yeah. I know people say Godfather 2, and that's a reasonable right. argument. Yeah. I don't count Godfather 3. Um, 
<laughs> Godfather, I love that movie. Um, shout out to Tia. She's listening right now, I think. She better be. Oh, that'd might. be dope if she yeah, said right? she was tomorrow. But um, she's going to Jamaica, so. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to her. Um, I don't have anything else to say. I don't have anything to say. Lauren, you got anything to say? <laughs> You're a singer, so promote it. Um, I have a single coming out soon, so Ooh. look out. Ooh. Nice. Where can people find that single? Yeah, where can they find it? I'll be posting it on my Instagram. I'll be posting a link to it on my Instagram. For okay. Now, for now. All right. That sounds dope. In the Fantastic. Near future. That's in dope. the near future. She'd had to sing. Oh. <laughs> had to sing. Yeah. Look, look to. out, Austin, Texas. Flouston, Texas. Sing. Look out. <laughs> well, in, in, in the spirit of promoting things, That's we saying. also have the Fuck Your Opinion podcast, as well as those damn comic book guys. As so well I as, I'm, I'm going to retire from FYL. As, as, well, as, the, retire from, as well as the no, Revolution Digital Group <laughs> family of podcasts. Yeah, you guys, yeah, y'all, are, we're like distant. So, we're, not, we're, we're actually first cousins now. Yeah, 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 yeah no. Yeah, we're, we're, me, we're, we're close we're, family. We're not going yeah. to discuss what me and Chris talk no. about, but it's a lot of things we're working yeah. on, uh, tweaking. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big, oh, yeah. big things coming down the yeah, pipe with yeah. RDG. It's yeah, good yeah, stuff. It's good stuff. I'm very excited. I'm Chris's first president or vice president. Yeah. Consulary. Yeah. My consigliere, right there. You're, um, what's the uh, name? Robert Duvall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Robert Duvall, I like that. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. So, on that note, everybody, that pretty much wraps it up for this edition of Dudes and Beer. Uh, this has been episode 65. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank Thanks you, so much everybody. for continuing to tune in. And until Love next you. time, if you Shout can't be good, you. be good at it. Hey. Good at it. Take care. Act Bye-bye. like you know. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Dudes and Beer Podcast. To listen to our live audio streams, tune in at dudesandbeer.com or spreaker.com forward slash dudesandbeer. You can find our episodes on soundcloud.com as well as the Google Play and iTunes market. You can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast service. Dudes and Beer is a proud member of the Revolution Digital Group family of podcasts. Thanks for listening, everybody, and until next time, drink responsibly.